Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got an update from AMD on the Ryzen 3000 boost issues, as well as some testing that was done on a leaked beta BIOS fix, so I'm really excited to go over this. But really quickly, if I sound terrible, I've just been sick for the last couple days, hopefully it goes away before too long, but in the meantime, please bear with me. With all that out of the way, let's get to the news. For those who haven't seen my recent video, there's been quite a few Ryzen 3000 owners who've had issues with their CPUs not getting to the advertised boost clocks. If you haven't seen that video, check it out here. Either way, AMD said that they found some issues in their latest Agisa firmware update that caused the problem, and that they'd update us on the 10th about a fix. Well, they have done that, and there's a couple interesting things in here that I'm going to cover. But first, a beta version of the upcoming Agisa code that's supposed to fix the clocks was leaked on Chipel's forums. Unfortunately, since then it seems to have been taken down, but luckily Tom's hardware was able to get it in time to run some tests, and the results are pretty interesting. First things first, Tom's hardware tested both the 3700X and 3900X on MSI's X570 godlike board with a Corsair H115i. Using the most up-to-date official BIOS from MSI, the 3700X got a maximum boost frequency of 4.375 GHz, so it's just 25 MHz shy of the rated 4.4 GHz boost. When they applied the new beta Agisa firmware update, the 3700X got exactly to the rated boost frequency. And when we look at AMD's update that they put out on the 10th, they claim the change adds between 25 and 50 MHz to your boost clock. Now, I will say that some users claim to have a much higher offset, so 50 MHz may not be enough for them. If that's the case, I'd first recommend you double check. Make sure your methodology is testing your best single core and your tools are accurate, etc, etc. If so, go ahead and send in a ticket to AMD. Next, when it comes to the 3900X, Tom's hardware actually ran into some issues, but keep in mind that this is supposed to be a beta, and it's not even something that AMD themselves have officially released to consumers, so problems are definitely understandable. Either way, Tom's hardware actually got a peak boost at the beginning of their lame test to 4.625 GHz, but it ultimately stayed around the rated 4.6 GHz boost, which is once again a 25 MHz boost from their pre-update of 4.575 GHz. The issue is that other tests actually saw lower frequencies than the current BIOS, so clearly this needs some work. Now, the question then becomes whether AMD did this at the expense of raising temperature and voltage thresholds. If so, that could mean that they likely lowered their frequency intentionally to help with the longevity like one a Zeus rep claims. With that said, in their update, they actually address that claim specifically and downright deny it. So we really can't say for sure one way or the other, and I guess it's just best to take their word for it, at least for now. Either way, we can look at temperature scaling tests done by Tom's hardware to potentially get an idea. First, you can see that when the CPU is between 75 and 78 degrees, the new BIOS does get higher frequencies. Unfortunately, Tom's hardware didn't provide voltages and a couple other things to say for sure, but one interesting fact is that the new one is actually quite a bit different from the BIOS reviewers had during testing. That means AMD didn't just revert back to the old BIOS, so there obviously is at least something that they changed. With that said, while putting this video together, I noticed that AMD revised their product page to yet again explain what they consider a max boost clock. Remember they updated the page when all of this started, but during my video on it, AMD had actually removed it. Now it actually says some oddly specific things, like it can get that while running a quote firstly single threaded workload. They then go on to mention that it's dependent on, but not limited to, these sets of factors. I mean, I guess it's up to you to determine if that was a bit misleading, but having to meet all of those standards definitely seems a bit ridiculous. So what does all this mean? Well, we still don't know if what AMD is saying is right, but they at least state that the newest update won't have any impact on lifespan, and at the end of the day, we're still going to get a boost to our CPUs. So while that does it for today, what do you think? Is this just a middle of the road difference between the first and second Agisa updates, or was this really a bug? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.